guys, Kyle, the Death Men of Anime here, bringing you my review for My Hero Academia, Chapter 263. Uh, yeah, sorry this one's so late, guys. So that's, uh, it's been a bit of a day. Um, but with, but let's kind of just get straight into it. So, it goes without saying, obviously, that Kaminari definitely took center stage in this chapter, and the interesting thing about his development here is that, on a surface level, it might seem a little sporadic, even with Nightmare's even with Midnight's encouragement and Jiro's, like, silent support, but the thing is, this is one of those, this is one of those times of character development where his development and what's led him to this point is something that was, that has already very subtly been, like, pretty much been, been built up and built upon with his various interactions with the other characters throughout the series. The only difference being is that unlike the other two, uh, like, for instance, let, let's use Izuku and the only difference is that unlike the other, un, un, unlike the other characters, though, the progression with Kaminari has relied more on smaller, more personal growth, more personal growth moments with his character and less of a big moment. Like, like for instance, like, and the best example to use for this is, of course, our two main leads, Izuku and Izuku and Baku, because a lot of... A lot of a lot of what their development is centered on is like the big epic, is like is are the big are the big moments that, that basically that show the progression of their of their characters like either is learning how to how to either, either learning new things about uh, about their quirk or, or learning new things in, in terms of what they believe as heroes, but with but with Kaminari it wasn't that he he didn't have he didn't have any of those big those big bombastic moments he only he, he, there are only like little, small little moments of of either his of either his development or of character interactions he had with others, and it's in those and it's in those smaller moments where I think Horikoshi knew it would it would take away the importance of this of this moment of this moment from from his Kaminari if if you gave him. If you give him like like from one big shining moment after another, and one big shining moment after another, but but from because but because Horikoshi knew in order to just kind of give Kaminari little moments here, little moments here and there, little moments that kind of showed how he how he, he was he was growing as a person, growing as a character, it um it it, it allowed it allowed for it allowed for this big for it allowed for this big epic epic shining moment of his development in order to in order to really shine even brighter than even brighter than before and midnight i think even and midnight was right on the money all it takes is thinking about that one person and one person and one person who, who you who you hold dear and who it is you want to protect for in order for a hero to really shine and for really shine and he's he's right like uh, like like for with for a lot like for really for, for basically Kaminari all all it takes is all, the, the people he wants to protect are his friends and obviously his friends and obviously Jiro like he wants to protect the the relationships he's 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 made throughout this he wants to protect the relationships he's he's made throughout this this ser throughout the series and um yeah, I, I will admit I'm not. I've I've never been the biggest. Um, I'll admit I've never been like the biggest shipper. I I don't believe in like anime manga shipping at all, to be honest with you. Or and very rarely if I do, it'll it'll be if it's if it's like an actual canon, an actual canon pairing. But yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Horikoshi kind of sold me on the. On the potential of uh, obviously a uh, from Jiro and, and Kaminari ship, like I, I think that was something that was already being set up. But yeah, I wasn't really I wasn't really getting in getting into it for the reason that it's not supposedly not canon, but it is it it is the potential of it is growing on me. I can't lie about that. Um, and yeah, a, a, a very and yeah, a very important point was definitely brought up leading to Kaminari's moment as well in the beginning, which is that even though the rear guard's job is to simply stay on patrol, it doesn't make their it doesn't make their like purpose their purpose any more 
any more um any more important than 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 than, than the main than the main battle force and and largely e even if their even their role is is a more simple one they still shouldn't let their guard down and in fact if anything if anything the rear guard sh should basically be, be more prepared to fight than those actually on the battlefield since like they're pretty much the last line of defense and that in itself is an th and that in itself obviously led to another moment where I I do have to call Mineta an idiot j as usual j j just just for how caref carefree and just for how carefree and just bore and just not taking his job seriously about it he was but I'd be at the same time I'd be lying if I said I'm if I said I'm not curious about what's going to happen with the rearguard group and the main force, because I feel it would, I, on top of the fact that I feel it would be beneficial for for Sarah and then his development in order to, in order to actually, in order to actually work with, in order to work within this group and and, and see how how they work with within the, this this particular group of heroes, but at the same time i really want to see how the fight dynamics in the rear guard would work would work out because aside from the aside from the pros a lot of the students quirks in that group definitely rely on more tactical means to fight over brute strength so it'll be it one thing i'm definitely curious about for sure is how each is how each, each of the characters in this group are, are going to be able to if, if they ever come around to seeing some action anyway I'm curious to see how these characters are going to be able to are going to be able to work are going to be able to work within their like like group and within and and, and work off all, every, all the other all the other characters around them like how, how we how each of these characters within this group is going to work off each other pretty much um, and and yeah just, and yeah it, it's just kind of it just kind of it really kind of just makes me curious how how old of course she's gonna is gonna play the play off the team dynamics in that particular one. Um, of course, let's talk about how the chapter ended with Hawks looking like he's prepared to kill twice. Which, first off, fingers crossed he doesn't, because again, of all the villains that deserve a happy ending, it's twice. But this, but. But also, this definitely feels like the sort of tipping point where if Hawks is going to die, I imagine it's probably going to be in this moment somehow. And, oh man, can you imagine how broken Twice would be if he ended up killing someone he thought was a friend or if he saw him dying in front of him? Like, either either way, I'm... Like I'm convinced, Hodokoshi loves to torture our boy twice. Cause the, 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 definitely the thing with this setup is that if definitely the thing with this setup for sure is that if if Tox dies in front of twice, there is no like scenario in this where twice doesn't get blamed, like of. Uh, like it's it's really going to it's really going to become a situation where whatever happens wh whether whether twice ends up killing Hawks or if Hawks gets killed by another villain and ends up and twice just ends up getting blamed for it then it's really just going to push him even further into into villainy honestly and and it's uh, like yeah, and it's it's just one of those things where you just really want a happy ending for twice. You really you really want a happy ending for twice, and you just kind of and you just kind of hope at this point that that Hawks doesn't die. But it's you, you really don't. It's it's really kind of just fascinating to see how this is going to go, honestly. Um, but yeah, guys, that's my review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook. Analyst to Crunchyroll, Dead Night of Enemy, signing off. Later, guys.